And if you'd like to have a title to the message, it's God's peace that passes all understanding. So our text verse is found in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said to us in Matthew 6, 25, therefore I say unto you. Now, if Jesus were standing here right now, he'd make this very same statement to you and me. I'd like to ask you to picture Jesus standing in this pulpit and speaking to you. He uses a human representative to minister his word to you, but Jesus is saying, I'm saying something to you. I'm saying something to you. He says, take no thought for your life. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, which you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Let me read several translations of that part about taking no thought for your life. The new king, that was the King James. The new King James says, do not worry about your life. King James says, don't think, take a thought. He, new King James, don't worry about your life. The Amplified Classic, I like this one. Stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious and worried about your life. You know, some people are of the mindset that if I don't worry about my children, I don't care about them. A lot of people think that. That if I, if I don't worry about something or someone, then I, I really don't care about them. I really don't have any love for them. See, that's a lie. I said that's a deception. That's a lie. And then in the New Living Translation, he says it this way. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Amen. So again, the King James says, take no thought for your life. Now, stop and just think about that. Jesus is saying, take no thought. So that means you and I as sons and daughters of God, we have the ability to not take a thought about our life. He, he's not, this is not a holy suggestion. This is not something that, that he just dreamed up that, you know, any, many, many, mo. Just choose. No, this is real. Don't take thought. That means you have the God-given ability, anointing, choice, and decision to not take thought for your life. What you think matters. Why? Because Romans 8, 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So carnally minded is a mind that centers up on the natural, on the lies and deceptions of the world, the lies and deception that even religion will give us. And so what you think can either be positive or detrimental to our lives. The carnal mind is death. The mind that is centered up on what you can see, what you hear naturally, what you smell, what you taste, what you feel, for your mind to be set on those things, that produces death. And the word death means separation. Separation from God's provision. God has provided for all of us. I said to you last week, I use this verse all the time in Ephesians 1, 3, that God has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So to be carnally minded is death, but when you're spiritually minded, it's life, it's peace, it's Zoe. The life is God has it, the life is God lives it. God's word is spiritual. We look at these verses from time to time because they're so relevant for our lives. In 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, Paul writes, for though we walk in the flesh, we don't war against the flesh. So, so your problem is not your supervisor at work. Your problem is not your in-laws. Your problem is not your next door neighbors. Your problem is not your drug addict cousin. Come on, somebody. That's not your problem. Okay, we have to see past the flesh. We have to see past the flesh and see people as God sees people. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. God loves people. God sees, sees the potential in all of us. 
He said, for the weapons of our warfare, they're not natural, they're not carnal, they're not human, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Now he's gonna show us where the strongholds are, they're in the mind. Verse five, casting down arguments. The King James says, casting down imaginations. That's the same word reasonings. So what happens to many of us when God is speaking to us if we don't obey quickly? If we don't obey quickly, then the mind takes over. And the mind starts reasoning, well, was that really God? Well, does he really want that? I mean, that's really going outside of my comfort zone. Does he really want me to go outside my comfort zone? See, the mind starts reasoning. If he tells you to give $100 to someone on the street, you start reasoning, well, I'll, I'll give them $10. He said, casting down arguments, imaginations, reasonings, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought. Right. See, Jesus said, take no thought. Take no thought for your life. Take no thought for what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. He's not saying that you can't think about, you know, the clothes you're going to wear. He's, not, he's saying, don't make that a worrisome problem in your life. Don't do that. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, not to Christ, of Christ. That's a difference. So when you start finding yourself having anxious thoughts, and literally that's what the Greek tells us, take no anxious thought. When you find yourself taking anxious thoughts, just go to the cross in your mind's eye. Go to the garden of Gethsemane about what Jesus did. Amen. Three times he prayed, Father, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. So all he was saying in the flesh, I don't want to go to the, to the cross. I don't want to suffer the indignation, the humility, the pain, but even more than that, I don't want to be separated from you because on the cross, when he became sin at 12 noon to three, darkness on the face of the earth, an earthquake in the world, God turned his back on Jesus. Man. For the first time from eternity past, Jesus was separated from his father, death, separation. And he had a hard time giving in to that. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And so when you come to the hard places in your life, if you will learn to pray that, Father, I don't want to, you see, just like I've told you, when he called me to pioneer this church back in 1981, the day he did that, I was just overjoyed till I thought about it. But he had the last word in my life. I had to be obedient. If I wanted to be in God's will, I had to be obedient to him. And I'm so glad I did. Because exactly what he said has come to pass. Amen. So casting down imaginations and reasoning. So what we have to learn to do as Christians, we have to know what to receive in our thought life. And we have to know what to resist in our thought life. Why is that? Because all these thoughts, listen to me, church, they're coming from the spiritual world. Did you hear me? They're coming from the spiritual world. And God will give you his thoughts, but so will the enemy will give you his thoughts. So you've got to learn what thoughts to receive, what thoughts to take, what thoughts to meditate on, and what thoughts to resist. Because God's word contains his thoughts. God's word is full of life. 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that God's word is inspired. It's inspired. Literally, that word inspired means breathed into. Holy Spirit breathed into different men throughout the Bible, through Bible times, God's inspiration of his word. In Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 11, God said this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. So that says it all right there. We can say it this way, 
God could have said, my thoughts are higher than man's thoughts. And they are. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, or nor, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. But look, first, look at verse 11. But so shall my word that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void or empty. But it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. When you receive the thoughts of God, when you receive his word and begin to meditate, begin to change your thinking. That's what Paul said to us in Romans 12 too. Don't be conformed to the age you're living in, the world system, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you begin to change your thought pattern, what happens? God will begin to help you to accomplish in your life his pleasure for your life, his will, his purpose, his destiny for your life. It'll begin to happen. Now, it takes time. Jesus gave us the parable of the sower. That the good heart is the heart that receives with joyfulness, with gladness, God's word. And then we begin to act on that word. And then the Bible says that God will bring a harvest, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. And so there's always increase in multiplication harvest when we take God at his word, think his thoughts, and begin to live our lives according to his will for our lives, just the same way Jesus did. And that means even the Bible says before Jesus went into the wilderness to be tested, that he was led by the Spirit. Now, I don't know if Jesus knew he was going to be tempted. I, I presume he didn't know. Now, he's a man. This is all, he's doing these things as a man, not as God. You understand that? He is God, but he's doing these things as a man. God knew that he was going to be tempted and tested. I don't think Jesus did. He may have, even if he did know, he still obeyed the Father. He went out there. God knew what was going to happen. And God sometimes will lead you into places that it gets difficult. This is where you grow. This is where you learn. This is where you learn, having done all to stand, therefore to stand, as Paul said to us. Hmm? This is where you learn. This is where more of your flesh begins to die out. Is it easy? It is not easy. I've, I've told you many, many times, Christianity is not for wimps. It really isn't. In 2 Timothy, Paul told Timothy, you've got to learn to endure hardness as a good soldier. Yes, sir. You got to endure it. But God will help you to endure it. God's kingdom lives within you. God's peace and joy and God's stamina, God's patience lives within all of us. Yes. So in Psalm 139, verse 17, listen to this. Again, God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, mankind. Look at Psalm 139, 17. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. What a great verse. How precious are your thoughts to me, God. Psalm 8, 4. What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. New Living Translation says, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? human beings that you should care for them. This is really incredible. Literally, the Hebrew says, what is man that your mind is full of him? Yeah. That's a hard thing to grasp. I mean, God has to rule the universe. He has to keep the stars in place. Come on, he has to, he's ruling everything. But his number one mindset is on you. Amen. If you would catch hold of what I just said, it could change your life. That God's mind is set and stayed, S-T-A-I-D, on you. Not in a mean, harsh, obligatory way, but in a loving, merciful, kind way. He sees you through Christ because Christ is your life. Here's another great verse I found. Amos 4, verse 13. For the Lord is the one who shaped the mountains, stirs up the winds, listen, and reveals his thoughts to mankind. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Jesus said, I'm going to build my church on the revelation knowledge 
of who Christ is, what he has for your life, what you can do through him. The revelation, having the revelatory thoughts that come from Holy Spirit, from God's word, to build our lives, to show us our pathway for life, to show us our pattern. Each life is different. We're, we're, we're not carbon copies of one another. Each life is different. Our own unique DNA, DNA, uh, different thumbprints. We're all different. We have different thoughts, different mindsets, different attitudes, different life. Everything is different. And God took that into account. And he sees the difference and the nuance of your life. And God knows exactly, just like I showed you several weeks ago about walking in God's ways. Now he has general ways for all of us. But specifically, he also has ways for you that are not for me and vice versa. Yes. He does. Yes. Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the thoughts, he says, I think toward you. God's thinking toward you. Yes. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. There you go. To give you a future and a hope. God is not mean. Amen. No, sir. God is not angry. God is not mad. God is not upset with you. He loves you. And his thoughts towards you are thoughts of peace, not evil, so you can have a future and a hope. Again, most people don't know that thoughts come from the spiritual world. Most people don't know that. And so that's why most people take almost any thought. Because they don't know they're coming from the spiritual world. So let me get in now to the, the thing I really want to share with you today about God's peace. Let me go back to Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life. What we shall eat, drink, your body, what you'll put on, is not the life more than meat, the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air. Remember we talked about this last week? For they don't sow, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your Father feeds them. Are they not much are you not much better than they? So we talked last week about the billions of birds on the planet. God takes care of them. They don't sow, they don't reap. Just wherever the food is, they, they eat it. Aren't you better than they? Doesn't God love you much more than they? He says, uh, verse 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to your stature? And why do you take thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. Remember, we talked about that last week. We talked about Solomon. What a great dresser he was, but it did not compare to the lilies of the field. How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And so God sees everything. God is in charge of the universe. And God's taking care of the things he wants to take care of, and he wants to take care of you. But you have to let him do it. You know, somebody coined the phrase, let go and let God. Uh, that's pretty good advice. Let go of your anxieties. Let go of your worries. Let go of your Christmas obligations and traditions if they get in the way of honoring and serving God first in your life. Mm, that didn't go around. Look at Philippians 4 verse 4. Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul writes, rejoice in the Lord always. When is always? Rejoice in the Lord when? Always. And then in the event we didn't get it the first time, he says again, I will say rejoice. Have you noticed that generally speaking, generally speaking, we can tell the nature of what people are thinking by their demeanor? by their countenance. As spirit-filled, spirit-led Christians, we have a sense of being around people who are sorrowful, saddened, depressed. Why is that? It's all spiritual. And you're a spiritual person. That same chapter of Romans 8 that says, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That same chapter says, when you're born again, you're now in the spirit. That's why you sense things. And many times we kind of slough it off. Oh, well, that's just me. Well, it is you, but it's God in you. 
We just kind of dismiss stuff that we, we know stuff. We know sometimes we just know things about people that when they're depressed because of the environment that they're operating in. Why is it we walk away from people like that all the time? Why is it we don't want to get involved with people like that? I can tell you why, because we're carnal and selfish. But God wants us to be involved. If nothing else, just say, can I pray for you today? A quick 20 second prayer would go a long ways. Or maybe just put your arm around them and say, God loves you and so do I. It's amazing what that might do for people. Well, I can't do that in public. Why not? Is there a law against that? Some people act like there's a law against it. I'm doing much better teaching than you are amening today. Look at verse 6 of Philippians 4. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Amplified says, do not fret. Do not fret or have anxiety about anything. Yeah. So if he tells you not to fret or to be careful or to be anxious about anything, you can do it. Amen. If he says, take no thought for your life, you can do it. Right. You have the spiritual goods, if I can use that term. You have the spiritual goods to be able to deal with life like this. Amen. Look at verse seven. He says, when you do that, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, that's human understanding, shall keep. The word keep here means to guard. The same word that Solomon used in Proverbs 4, to guard your hearts with all diligence. For out of your heart flows the issues, the forces, the springs of life. Your heart's so important. The peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Don't try to do it on your own. Do what he says. Take no thought for your life. Be anxious for nothing. And in everything by prayer and supplication. Everything means everything. Amen. Let your request be made known to him. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, church, what things soever are true, hmm? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just or righteous, whatsoever things are pure. Titus 1 says, unto the pure, all things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. That's the gospel. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things. Think on these kinds of things. I can't do that. Yes, you can. He said you can. Who am I going to believe, him or you? I'm going to believe him. Because you can do them. But you've trained your mind and your soul to not do these things. But you can untrain your mind and soul by retraining your mind and your soul to do what he says. And I close. With John 14, 1, and then verse 26 and 27. He said, let not your heart be troubled. But he, the Bible's full of this stuff. Yeah. Don't let your heart be troubled. Amen. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. If you believe in the Father, believe in Jesus also. And then he tells us in verse 26 and 27, but the comforter, the comforter, parakletos, Jesus used this word constantly about Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. He comforts us. You know, my first wife passed away four years ago. I needed his comfort. He was there for me. It's amazing how good he was to me. He's always good to me. But in a time like that, he was super special, super comforting which is the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. This is supernatural. This is spiritual. Whatsoever I've said to you. Now, he gives us verse 27, but it's on the heels of verse 26. I'm convinced if we don't believe verse 26, we're gonna have a hard time with verse 27. So he says, now peace. In the Hebrew, shalom. The Greek, irene, same word. 
Nothing missing, nothing broken. Welfare, health, prosperity, every kind of good. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as this world, this crazy, fallen, mixed up world, perverse world. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Here he says it again. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Just receive his peace. Let your requests be, mo be made known unto him in all things. Holy Spirit is there to comfort you, to counsel you, to guide you, to get you out of the mess. Maybe you're the reason you got in that mess. He won't condemn you for it. He'll help you get out of it. Come on, somebody. Folks, he loves you. And he has peace for you. The holiday season, every season of your life, God is a God of peace. Father, I thank you for your word today. So we learned today that the Apostle Paul said to us in Philippians 4, to be careful, be worried, be anxious, be fretful about nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And then he says, and then the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. So every single day, we have to be men and women of prayer. We have to be people of thanksgiving, and we have to be casting our care, anxiety, and worries over onto the Lord. Why? Because He cares for you and me. I wanna thank you for joining with me on The Voice of Faith today. I remind you, God loves you, we love you. Till we see you next time, Happy New Year, and God bless your life. Visit donkaywood.com, an enormous source of wisdom and spiritual education from our pastor, with exclusive teaching videos, blogs, and a weekly podcast by Pastor Don and his wife, Mary, called Faith Builders. At ocfc.store, you can stream or download this complete series and many other life-building messages anytime, anyplace. Start your free trial today. Voice of Faith is produced at Odessa Christian Faith Center, a church that is always building great lives. We are located at 9000 Andrews Highway in Odessa, Texas. Our Sunday worship services are at 9 a.m., 1045 a.m., and 1230 p.m., which you can watch live at ocfc.online.church. We also worship together on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Find out more about us at ocfc.org.